Hello again. This is Math 2231 coming to you from the College of DuPage. And the title of this lecture is Limits, Pondering Infinity, Part 1. As always, please be an attentive learner while watching this video. By way of introduction, uh, so far we have discussed the limit as x tends to c of f of x equal l, where c is a real number and l is a real number. Today we discuss what it means to broaden these concepts for both of these variables. First, we consider allowing l to grow infinitely large. So if we look at the function f of x equal 3 over x minus 2, and if we look at the graph, uh, what we see is that uh, 3 over um, x minus 2 tends to infinity. It grows infinitely large as x approaches the point 2 from the right. The denominator is getting closer and closer to 0. And similarly, we find that 3 over x minus 2 approaches minus infinity as you approach 2 from the left. So f of x increases and decreases without bound as x approaches 2. And again, we have graphical considerations and we can have numerical considerations and we can see that um, as x approaches 2 from the right, you're getting closer and closer to being unbounded. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And here it gets uh, decreasing without bound. Here it is increasing without bound. Here it is decreasing without bound. That's what we mean by something approaching infinity or approaching minus infinity. And this is how we denote it. We say the limit and in this example as x tends to uh, 2 from the left of 3 over x minus 2 is minus infinity, meaning f of x decreases without bound as x approaches 2 from the left. And whenever we write the limit as x tends to 2 with a plus in the exponent of 3 over x uh, minus 2 is infinity, that means f of x increases without bound as x approaches 2 from the right. Now the symbols plus and minus infinity refer to positive infinity and negative infinity, but they don't represent real numbers. Infinity is not a real number. It is a limit of real numbers. But they are convenient symbols used to describe unbounded conditions more concisely. A limit in which f of x increases or decreases without bound as x approaches c is called an infinite limit. And being mathematicians, we have to actually precisely define what that is, just like we defined limit in terms of epsilon deltas. Uh, you won't see an epsilon here, but you will see capital M's and N's. Here's the definition of an infinite limit. Let f be a function that is defined at every real number in some open interval of c, except possibly for c itself. Again, we know at limits, we don't care what happens at c itself. So the statement the limit as x tends to c f of x equal infinity means that for each capital M greater than zero, no matter how large, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that the f of x is greater than m whenever um, x is within delta of c not c itself. Similarly, the statement, the limit as x tends to c of f of x equal minus infinity means that for each n less than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that f of x is less than n whenever zero is um, less than the absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, when we're within a delta neighborhood of c. Here's a picture. So you see here's the M that we pick, no matter how large, we could pick it anywhere, but we pick it here. Then in this example, we see that if you're within delta of C, you're above, the function is above M. 
So again, to define the infinite limit from the left, we replace 0 less than absolute value of x minus c less than delta by uh, c minus delta less than x less than c. And to find the infinite limit from the right, replace 0 less than x minus c less than delta by c less than x less than c plus delta. The picture really says it all. So let's do an example. And let's uh, ask you to estimate something from the graph. Uh, so um, determine the limit of each function as x approaches 1, both from the left and from the right. And here it is. And um, it would be good for you to pause the video and give that a try. Let's see how you did. So uh, uh, in the first one you see from the left and from the right it becomes uh, unbounded above so that limit is going to be infinity. And in part b you see when you approach from the uh, left you go unbounded towards positive infinity but from the right you are unbounded going to minus infinity. The left does not uh, behave as the right. And so what we're going to say is that the limit, uh, uh, the limit would not exist, uh, but the limit from the um, left is infinity. The limit from the right is minus infinity. Now, you might remember that these are um, related to what we called vertical asymptotes. And we'll talk about the, defini the definition of this. But if it were possible to extend the graphs, you would see that each graph becomes arbitrarily close to the vertical line x equal 1. And you can see the line x equal 1 here and here. Now this line is a vertical asymptote of the graph of f. And you st we will study horizontal asymptotes. And in fact, uh, later in the course, we'll talk about what are called oblique asymptotes. But here is the definition. If f of x approaches infinity or negative infinity as x approaches c from the right or the left, then the line x equals c is a vertical asymptote of the graph of f. Now realize that if the graph of a function f has a vertical asymptote at x equals c, f certainly can't be continuous at c. And from previous examples, note that each of the function was a quotient, and the vertical asymptote occurred at a number in which the denominator is 0 and the numerator is not 0. Let's uh, consider this as a theorem. So let f and g be continuous on open interval containing c. And if f of c does not equal 0 and g of c does equal 0, then there exists an open interval containing c such that g of x does not equal uh, 0 for all x not equal c in the interval. So that's the open interval that we have. Then the graph of the function h of x equal f of x over g of x has a vertical asymptote at x equals c. Now I have to prove this using the definition. So here's the proof. Um, let's consider the case for which f of uh, c is greater than 0 and that there exists uh, some b greater than c such that uh, x is between c and b implies that g of x is greater than 0. Then we're picking m greater than 0. We're going to choose delta 1 such that if 0 is less than x minus c is less than delta 1, that tells us that f of x over 2 is less than f of x is less than 3 uh, over 2 uh, f of c. So that's the delta 1 we choose. And we will also choose delta 2, where when uh, x minus c is between 0 and delta 2, 
means that 0 is less than g of x and g of x is less than f of x over 2m. By the way, that means that g of x is, um, is greater than 2m over f of c. Now, we pick a delta to be the smaller of delta 1 and delta 2. So if we're in, again, the range where 0 is less than x minus c is less than delta, tells us that f over g is bigger than, and we just pick the smaller values and we get m. So this quotient is greater than m. So it follows that the limit as x um, tends to uh, c, this time from the right, of f of x over g of x equal infinity. And that means that the line x equals c is a vertical asymptote for the graph of h. Let's look at some other uh, examples, and we're applying this theorem. So if we consider h of x equal 1 over 2x plus 1, uh, we will see, uh, and that was 2 times the whole of x plus 1, uh, that at minus 1 we will have a vertical asymptote. If we're considering h of x equal x squared plus 1 over x squared minus 1, we can factor the bottom. And we can see that there are vertical asymptotes at x equal minus 1 and x equal plus 1. And because sine of x is equal to 0 and cosine of x is not equal to 0, uh, we can look at the uh, graph of h of x is equal to the cotangent of x. And we will see that we get vertical asymptotes occurring at x equal n times pi, where n is an integer. Now, the theorem that we uh, proved requires that the value of the numerator uh, be non-zero. When both the numerator and denominator are zero, this is called an indeterminate form, and you can't determine the behavior without further investigation. So let's look at an example. Uh, so determine all vertical asymptotes of this, uh, of this graph. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to factor the numerator and denominator, and we'll observe that there is, uh, and if we were to plug in um, the, uh, the value x equal 2, we would get 0 over 0. But if we factor the numerator and denominator, what we can do is we can cancel out the common factor of x um, minus 2. So we see that this is what we have for x not equal to 2. Now what that means is I have vertical uh, asymptote then uh, when uh, x is equal to minus 2. You can see it here. Uh, but we have a hole because the function is not defined for x equal to. And we have that the limit as you come from the uh, left is minus infinity. The limit as you come from the right is plus infinity. And again, we're undefined when x is equal to 2. Uh, here's a problem for you to practice. Uh, determine each of these limits. The limit is x tends to 1 from the left, and the limit is uh, x tends to 1 from the right for this one. Uh, please uh, pause the video and give these a go. Let's see how you did. Well, when we consider uh, this one, uh, what happens is that the uh, limit from the left is infinity and the limit from uh, the right is minus infinity. Uh, let's uh, talk about another theorem. Uh, many of the properties that we talked about with limits apply to infinite limits as well. You just have to think about them. So suppose that the limit is x tends to c of f of x equal infinity, and the limit is x tends to c of g of x equal l, where l is not infinity. Then if you add these two functions together and take the limit, you will get infinity. Uh, the product is going to be positive infinity, if L is greater than 0, and minus infinity if L is less than 0. 
and the quotient is going to be zero because you're going to have L over something that is getting infinitely large, and so that's getting really close to zero. Now, similar properties hold for one-sided limits and for functions for which the limit um, of f of x as x approaches c is minus infinity. Now, um, here's a proof of the sum property, and you could prove the others using the m's and so forth. Okay, so to show that the limit of f of x plus g of x is infinite, choose capital M greater than zero. And we need to find a delta greater than zero such that f of uh, x plus g of x, the absolute value is greater than m whenever uh, we were, are within delta of c. So for simplicity's sake, assume L is positive and let M1 equal capital M plus 1. Because the limit of F is infinite, there is a delta 1 such that F of X is greater than M1 whenever uh, we are within delta 1 of uh, C. And also because the limit of G is L, we know that there exists a delta 2 such the, that the difference between G of X and L in absolute value is less than 1 whenever we are within delta 2 of C. So we pick delta to be the smaller of the two. And so if we are within the minimum delta of the two of C, that means both of these are true. F is bigger than M plus 1 and G is less than 1. So if we take f plus g, that's bigger than, and I get l minus 1, m less 1, and, uh, and this is minus uh, m, and, uh, or excuse me, this is equal to uh, m, because uh, 1 and minus 1 uh, cancel out. This is m plus l, which is bigger than m, because l was greater than 0. So you conclude that this is also equal to infinity. Now here's some more limits that you uh, can practice uh, applying uh, some of those properties too. So for example, the limit as x tends to 0 of 1 plus 1 over x squared is infinity, because this one goes to infinity. Uh, the limit as uh, x tends to 1 uh, from the uh, left of x squared plus 1 over cotangent of pi x. Well, because the numerator limit is 2 and the denominator is minus infinity, this answer is 0. If we're talking about 3 cotangent x and we're talking about the limit as you tend to 0 from the right, well, the limit of the uh, of 3 is just 3, and the limit as x tends to 0 from the right of the cotangent of x is infinity, so you know that has to be infinity. And finally, because the limit as x tends to infinity from the left of x squared equal uh, 0, and the limit as x tends to 0 from the left of 1 over uh, x equal minus infinity, then this sum is going to be 0 plus minus infinity is going to be minus infinity. In closing, now more than ever, time is precious. Each day must count. Do the math. It will make you strong. And now more than ever, take care of yourself and of each other. We're all in this together. God bless you all.